In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Greetings, good people of God. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Thursday, the 30th of November, 2023. It is Thursday of the 34th and last week in Ordinary Time, Church Year A. Today, the Church celebrates the feast day of St. Andrew, Apostle. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. We humbly implore your majesty, O Lord, that just as the blessed Apostle Andrew was for your church a preacher and pastor, so he may be for us a constant intercessor before you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 to 18. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 19. The response to the psalm is, Their sound goes forth through all the earth. The gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. I read from the first reading. Brethren, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For man believes with his heart and so is justified, and he confesses with his lips and so is saved. The scripture says, No one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and bestows his riches upon all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are men to call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without a preacher? And how can men preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. But they have not all heeded the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is Make yourself a Bible that others will read. Make yourself a Bible that others will read. Dearly beloved of the Lord, it is the last day of the month of November of this year, 2023. We thank God for bringing us to the end of this month. Today, the church celebrates the feast day of St. Andrew, Apostle. He was born at Bethsaida and is the brother of Simon Peter. He was formerly a disciple of John the Baptist and then later followed Christ after John the Baptist showed Christ to them as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, conferred John chapter 1, verse 29. After finding Christ, it was Andrew who introduced his brother Peter to Jesus. We have found the Messiah, Andrew told Peter, conferred John chapter 1, verse 41, and he brought Peter to Jesus. He was the apostle who pointed out the boy with the loaves and fishes, conferred John chapter 6, verses 8 to 11. Then 
Jesus fed the crowd of 5,000. He preached the gospel in many different places and finally, he suffered martyrdom in Achaia. In celebrating St. Andrew today, we celebrate the mission of an apostle and indeed the mission of all the baptized. Jesus has sent us all out. Go out into the whole world and make disciples of all nations. So that mandate has also been entrusted to us. We have each been called and sent out. We are on mission. We cannot be sent unless we are first called. The one who takes the initiative to call is God. The mission is his. The work is his. Then he calls workers to his harvest. After the call, God needs a generous offer of ourselves. Our response should be, Yeah, I am Lord, send me. I come to do your will. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Making ourselves available for service, then God can send us. If we refuse to answer, it means we are not available for service and we cannot be sent. The gospel shows us the call of Andrew. He was a fisherman and was about his trade when Jesus called him from the boat and the waters of the sea to an all-new mission, from a fisher of fish to a fisher of men. We are told, hearing his call, they immediately left everything and followed him. Matthew chapter 4 verse 20 and Luke chapter 5 verse 11. They left their nets, their boats, their family, their friends and their profession and readily made themselves available for God and his new plan for them. In the first reading, St. Paul echoes the need for messengers. People can only believe in what they have heard. When they believe in their hearts, then they profess with their lips. They can only profess what they have believed, and they can only believe what they have heard. They can only hear unless someone is sent to preach to them. And St. Paul concludes, How beautiful are the feet of the messenger of good news. Romans chapter 10 verse 15. Dear friends in Christ, not only the apostles are sent out on mission. In fact, all the baptized are on mission. And we are out, not only the priests and the religious men and women. All of us, by virtue of our baptism, we are evangelizers. We are supposed to bring the good news to the ends of the world. Our world is still a huge harvest farm. There is still much to be done when it concerns the gospel. There are many, very many, who still do not know Christ and live lives as though God did not exist. You know some, even in your family, who even though have been baptized, have all backslidden from the church. We need therefore, like Andrew, to spread the good news to the ends of the earth. This is the mission we have as baptized persons. On baptism day, we gave a yes to God's call and made ourselves available to be sent. Are we on that mission? On baptism day, we were prepared and fortified for mission when we were anointed priests, prophets, and kings. As a Christian, you cannot be indifferent. What is your role in spreading the good news? Let none hear you idly saying, there is nothing I can do while the souls of men are dying and the master calls for you. Take the task he gives you gladly. Let his work your pleasure be. Answer quickly when he call it, Here I am, send me. What do you need to do that you are not yet doing as a disciple, as an evangelizer? What do you need to improve on? What are you doing that is counter-witnessing and that you need to stop? St. Paul, in today's first reading, asks this question. Is it that people have not heard? And if they have heard, why are people still living wayward lives? It could just be because we, who ought to be witnesses, are not witnessing enough. 
we who ought to be evangelizers have failed in our mission. Pope St. Paul VI in Evangelii Nunciandi number 41 says, If modern man will believe in what we preach and say to them, if our good news will transform our world, it is because we are more witnesses than preachers. Modern man believes and will listen more to witnesses than preachers. You and I, we have the duty to make of ourselves Bibles that others can read. They do not need to read Bibles. How many even have the time to read the Bibles? Therefore, be the Bible that some people will read. They should look at your life and believe that there is a Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. They should look at your life and believe that there is a heaven and there is a hell. Are you convinced that when people look at you, they can say in truth that there is a heaven? Some of us do not give people any conviction of a heaven because we are counter-witnessing. What then is the way forward? First, God needs us to be messengers of the good news. Blessed are the feet of the messengers of good news. To be God's messenger and carrier of his message brings a certain joy to your life and heart. Beloved, wherever you are, preach the gospel. Be it on your way to the farm. Be it on the highway. Be it in the market, in your office, wherever you are, preach the gospel by word of mouth and also by your good example. Second, we should readily accept to do God's work of spreading the gospel. How? Wherever you find yourself, in your office as a worker, you can do so with your colleagues. By praying in the morning before work, inviting them to pray with you, and in the evening at the close of the day. By sharing the gospel with your friends and family, as many of you do. But not only, make the effort to live the gospel that you share with them. You can also do so by being generous in your support to the work of evangelization. You could buy Bibles, or perhaps you could even contribute that Bibles be bought and spread all over the world. In your neighborhood, make the difference. Wherever you find yourself, in private or in public, in the market or on the street, may your life be a living witness of the gospel. Finally, we should also try to win over to the faith our lapsed brothers and sisters. And like I said, even in our families, there are some of us who are Catholics, born Catholics, but in that same family, there are others, born Catholics too, baptized in the Catholic Church, who have left. Charity begins at home. Let us begin by convincing them of our faith. But how can you convince them of a faith that you do not know yourself? Therefore, beloved, the need for us to study. Read the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Know your faith. Know doctrine. Read the Bible. How do you try to win over someone to the faith when you yourself are not convinced? Are you indifferent with things that concern the faith? Or do you try to bring God to those who don't believe? Dear friends, the work is plentiful. Remember that if you bring a sinner back to God from their evil way, you gain a favor for yourself. Confer James chapter 5, verses 19 to 20. Likewise, if anyone were to go to hell because you failed to admonish them, you share in their guilt. Like Jesus says, it were better that you were never born. Because if you mislead any of these little ones, it were better that a millstone be tied round your neck and you thrown into the sea. But God forbid that we are the cause of the downfall of anyone. May St. Andrew intercede for us and we wish a happy feast day to all those who go by the name Andrew and to institutions named after him. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go out and preach the gospel. May your life be the Bible that some will read.